Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I'm going to go ahead and do my best and see if I can help you guys out and uh, maybe give you guys some ideas for how to create your own build in Grim Dawn. Now if you have already played Grim Dawn, this video may not help you too much, um, but maybe you might learn something with some of the legendaries I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on in the video. So first off, uh, I want to show you guys a really good website that you can use to help build your characters in Grim Dawn. Now, I pretty much talk about this website in like majority of my videos simply because it really is such a great tool for players who are new to use it. So the first step in Grim Dawn would be probably selecting your classes. So if you're using Grim Tools, you can just click this book down below and you can go ahead and start with your two classes. So the first thing you want to find out is, do you want to play an offensive character? Do you want to play a defensive character? Are you physical, elemental, summoner, self-cast, totems? There's a bunch of different things. So what I would personally recommend is go ahead and look through the classes, maybe read the description and find something that you want to play. So I'm going to pick something very basic like a soldier, for example. So the first thing to note is when you're looking at your, your class abilities, you want to look at this. Squares usually mean active abilities and or main attacks. So if you read Cadence, it says when used as your default weapon attack, which basically means that you can replace this for left click and it turns into your new auto attack. Anything that's a circle is passive. Either it's a passive buff. So like this, for example, Menhir's Will is not, a, it's not attached to anything. It simply states when health drops below 33%, you get this, you know, this associated buff. But when things are attached to a square, so, you know, square into circle, you can see that it actually will augment the skill of that it's attached to. If it has another line, like a branch, typically it's something that's pretty major about it. So if we look at Discord, 33% of physical damage is converted into elemental damage on our Cadence, which deals weapon damage and flat physical. And you would see here like fighting form and etc. deadly momentum. So what I would recommend for you to do is the first thing is pick a class that looks interesting to you and find at least, I would say, two abilities, right? Two abilities that work for what you want to do. Um, and one thing to note is you want to make sure that at least one of them has a low cooldown of like one second, two seconds, or three seconds, right? So step one, we're going to play Soldier and we're going to go ahead and look at Cadence. So I want to play a Cadence build. Now the other thing to note is that you can respec all of your abilities. The only thing you cannot respec is your actual class choice. So the second you put one point into Soldier, you cannot remove the class. So let's go ahead and get Cadence. Now what I recommend for you to do is when you're leveling up a character, there is nothing wrong with maxing out a skill. The only thing you have to be careful of is that the mana cost does not get too high or the energy cost. So one cool thing to do, for example, is instead of pumping a bunch of points into Cadence, now this skill does not really follow that line because the energy cost is four. You could pump points into a passive and not all the passives scale the energy. So if you look at this, this is a two energy cost, which gives it a chance to pass through enemies. Uh, and you can see the other associated stats. So I decide I'm going to go ahead and go 12 points in here. Uh, I think that military conditioning is good. Let's put a few points in here. Uh, I'm not going to use a shield, so we're not going to put shield training. Uh, let's go Menhir's Will because it is like a, a second wind almost. Uh, that requires a shield as well. This just gives us, this is, I mean, this life regen. We could just put one point in it. Uh, and there, we have the basics done for our character. So we're going to play a Cadence build uh, with Fighting Form. So Fighting Form gives us plus to physical and pierce damage. And being as we're a soldier, we're already pretty defensive. We have, you know, a chance at second wind. Um, our uh, soldier base points is very high into physique and health. So we do get a lot of health scaling from Soldier. So let's pick another class. Let's pick, say, Demolitionist. Now, I personally have never really played this, so uh, if something gets fucked up, I do apologize, but here we go. So let's take a look at what Demolitionist has. Usually, at the top of a class tree will be passives that activate off of default weapon attacks. 
So this is always something you can add into builds, like one point into, for example, Markovian's advantage, and let's say one point into Zolan's technique. You should probably max them though if you're playing an auto attack build. One cool thing to note off these is it says can activate with all default weapon attacks. Cadence is one of those skills I was telling you about which can activate as a default weapon attack, which gives a huge advantage to these. This would basically be your spam ability. So if I look at Demolitionist, Demolitionist has something called Fiery Strike, which you could use instead of Cadence, for example. Uh, it is also a default weapon attack, but this would be more fire damage oriented. So let's go ahead and put, let's look at Flame Touched. Flame Touched would give us offensive ability, which is like accuracy and crit damage, and I, I think even crit chance, um, and it gives us flat fire damage. So there's nothing necessarily wrong with scaling this because if we want to go crit, the offensive ability would be pretty good. And then later on down the line, we can get temper, which actually gives us percentage physical damage and flat physical, which would scale very well with cadence. It's very important to really look through the class abilities to see everything. There's also some active buffs and buffs and demolitionists like vindictive flame. You can see which gets supported with Olsen's wrath. But let's not talk too much about this because this is more for the general and not just, you know, a commando build. Most, if not, actually, I think all classes, if you go 50 points in, will get kind of like an, an ultimate buff. And it's called an exclusive skill. You can only have one of them. It's pretty important to figure out what the exclusive skill does because you want to make sure that your build can synergize with one of the however many uh, you can pick up with between your builds. So I would either want to make use of Menhir's Bulwark, uh, Olrion's Rage, or in Demolitionist, we could go into Olsen's Chosen. Actually, this is not one. Just kidding. Does, does Demolitionist not have one? Wait, what? Okay, I guess Demolitionist doesn't have one. So this is what I was talking about. Are, are, are they called Demolitionist? Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so I guess you would have to go Soldier for that one. I want to talk about the next part of your character. If you find two class combinations that look really fun to you, but you feel like there's kind of something messed up between them, like you're scaling too many elements, does that make sense? Because that should happen a lot in Grim Dawn. If you want to play like an elementalist soldier or something, you can actually look at the legendaries in Grim Dawn. Because the legendaries in Grim Dawn are very, very unique with what they do. So in my inventory, I've kind of added, or I, sh I guess I have a couple legendaries here, and I want you guys to really look at the stats on them because of what they really do. So this Shard of Eternal Flame, we just want to look at the bottom stats. We don't care about the top stats. So look at everything in gray, basically. Gray means I don't get any benefit from it because it's not for my class. This gives 50% pierce damage conversion to fire to canister bomb and 80% of physical damage converted to fire for force wave. Force wave is a soldier skill. So if we go back to our grim calc and look at soldier, force wave is right here. Even though it does so much physical, we can convert it to fire with just an amulet. It's not a set bonus or anything. It's just one standalone piece of gear that could completely create an entire build just based off of that conversion, which is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hover over a couple other ones as well. And I would really recommend for you guys to, if you want to take your build to end game and do a lot of the end game content, you're probably going to use something like this. It doesn't have to be conversion. Maybe it just adds another layer of damage or flat damage or maybe extra AOE to your build because you really want to make the full use of your build. You know, you want to bring out the fullest potential and extent of your character. That's called min-maxing, right? Now, there are also um, retaliation type builds as well. There's pet retaliation type builds. And then there's just weapons in general that will give you conversion. So this Obsidian Juggernaut doesn't actually give you any conversion to a skill. It just literally says 36% of your physical damage is converted to Chaos, which is another really huge thing if you're playing a physical build and you want to convert to Chaos. So now that we've talked about the basics of like, you know, understanding your gear and how to associate it and whatnot, the next thing to bring up and the last and final one would be, actually technically there's two more, we'll go over the devotions. Now, I've already made a devotion guide, so if you guys are curious, you can scour my YouTube and you can find that there. It's one of the recent videos. 
But devotions are very important because they synergize with your build, always. Because it's, it's not like you're locked into a devotion, you literally can choose them. So for example, I'm gonna type in fire. And any little red dot that pops up here means that there's fire inside the devotion. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at Aldara's Phoenix right now, or Aladra's Al Phoenix. So this gives, <clears throat> this is, well, elemental damage, I think tags is fire, so that should be good. This would give uh, life, chaos, res, fire, retaliation. Uh, another elemental damage boost. Crit damage, fire damage, burn damage. And then phoenix fire, which is a chance on crit attack. Now, these values, of course, will scale off of your gear and everything else, so this is not the actual values of the devotion itself, but this is an example of it. And you can actually scale a devotion to be one of your main abilities if the cooldown is low enough to support it. The last thing to bring up um, would be components. Components on gear is really, really awesome because components can give you actual skills. Along with pieces of gear, that's something I didn't mention. If you look at, for example, this Ruby of Domination that I have, it gives me an active ability that buffs my pets by a huge amount. <clears throat> so you'll find things like this on your associated legendary pieces that you acquire throughout the game. But you also have components and relics. So I'm going to go ahead and look at a component over here. And let's just find something pretty basic like, I don't know, let's see. What do we have here? Hmm. I think Severed Claw or something has one. <clears throat> Searing Ember. Well, here you go. Searing Ember, if you create it, it gives you Fire Blast, which is granted by an item, which does not even have a cooldown. And you can see scales off of your main hand weapon damage. So if you say you're playing a build that doesn't get a good skill until like level 40, even though I don't know how that would be possible, you could use this Searing Ember, put it in your weapon, and basically use this to carry you all the way up until you can play your actual build. So you really do have so much flexibility with what you're able to do. Um, and one easy thing for stat allocation, I guess you can say as well, is Physique is typically king for most builds, uh, as it gives you life, uh, health regen, which is irrelevant, uh, but it gives you defensive ability, which is your chance to be hit and your chance to be crit, which is really important in this game because, you know, you can scale crit multiplier and you could just get absolutely destroyed. But anyway, that's pretty much going to be about it. I apologize if things were kind of jumbled up a lot. There's just so much information in Grimnon and it's really hard to kind of like put everything in order for you guys. So anyway... Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, if it did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.